Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I wanted to take a look at the House of the Dragon series with a particular focus on King Viserys and what is actually going on with his health because it's been an identifiable focal point despite the overall darker theme of the story focusing on the pending war between the Targaryens which of course happens after the king dies which means the king will die so you know there's no real spoilers here. There's not a single episode that doesn't highlight the king's declining health and I want to take a look at those issues today and actually come to what I hope will be a solid conclusion on what exactly is happening to King Viserys the first. Now the king was relatively healthy in his youth and often enjoyed himself with his younger brother Daemon as he recalled during their conversation on Daemon's return. However as he got older it seems as if his body begins to deteriorate quicker than it should and I'll take a look at these examples momentarily but we actually have to take a look at the Targaryen bloodline to begin with. Now the Targaryens believe that their blood is of the dragon and and should be kept absolutely pure. Realistically their blood is pretty special, that part is true, but that doesn't mean that inbreeding is the answer, which is why the king actually favoured intermarrying with the Valerians due to their blood also being from old Valeria. So inbreeding is highly dangerous because it means that the child will receive a copy of both parents genes. Now what this means is if the parents are from the same family then both genes will be too similar, which means that there could be two dominant genes or two recessive genes. This isn't good because there has to be one of each. Two dominant genes can result in many defects in appearance, it can affect mental stability or even cause genetic issues like a weakened immune system or even haemophilia which is in my opinion as someone who has over 30 years of experience of not being a doctor is what Viserys seems to have. That's just my opinion. The biggest reveal was episode 5 as we're shown just how seriously ill the king is but we have to go back to the first episode to just to find out where this all begins. So Viserys is being treated for an open wound on his back that he seems to have gotten from cutting himself on the Iron Throne. The throne wasn't very comfortable at all. The blades seemed to be as sharp as the day they were forged into a chair. The wound just doesn't seem to heal. It seems infected in the manner of, for example, the exposed flesh of Sir Jorah Mormons when he was being treated by Samuel Tarly. Now from the looks of the wound, it doesn't seem like grayscale because because the skin isn't actually hard. Grayscale gets its name because the skin becomes hard with a grey stone like appearance that cracks as the victim moves making it look like scales. Eventually the person becomes wholly entombed within their skin within their entire body and in addition to that grayscale is passed by touch and is highly highly contagious. That is nothing like what is going on with Viserys. The doctors who touch him and burn off the infected sections are not coming down with anything. What Viserys has does doesn't seem to be contagious. No one else has come down with it. So that suggests to me it's something that he developed internally that he was genetically disposed to having. The most important thing to note is that it would not heal. The king then cuts his hand on the throne which becomes infected despite being treated fairly quickly. The maester then results to using maggots to eat away the decaying flesh in order to save the fingers but ultimately it proves to be unsuccessful. So what alarms me is that Viserys is unable to heal properly from a cut on his finger and the cut on his back. They both turn into what's known as chronic wounds which can result in necrosis of the flesh and necrosis can spread across the body if untreated. This is just one possibility. Now the king's genetic issues certainly come into play here due to what seems to be a basic lack of an immune system and standard healing capabilities. He also seems to be in a lot of pain and consumes quite a large amount of alcohol in order to cope with his discomfort. He becomes weaker and barely has any energy. You can see when he kills the deer that it takes absolutely all of his effort and energy just to drive the spear through the animal and he has to do it again because the first time he didn't manage to kill it. He looks gone in the face and to be honest it's as if he is literally dying right before us at a noticeable but slow rate. I do have additional information from actor Paddy Considine himself who explained Viserys illness in a podcast. So Paddy says the following, he's suffering from a form of leprosy, he's suffering, his body is the deteriorating. His bones are deteriorating. So he's not actually old. He's still a young man in there. He's just unfortunately got this thing that's taken over his body. It becomes a metaphor for being king and the stress and strain that it puts on you, you know, and what it does to you physically, what it does to you mentally. So Paddy himself has actually given us an insight into what's going on with Viserys. We get our best look of how the disease has progressed in episode 5 where we see the king's arm in an almost encased in 
what seems to be a soft shell of already dead, decrepit flesh that just sits in place on his arm. It's almost like if you pull that off, it'll go down to the bone. That's what I think anyway. It begins at his fingers and his entire left arm is covered. It's not contagious as I mentioned, it's not grayscale, but as Paddy mentioned, this is a form of leprosy that seems to be encasing his body with this cast of infected flesh. Furthermore, Viserys is also mentally struggling from the pressures of being king, a role he ultimately despises. He lacks the strength to make important decisions, he lets the role consume him into making terrible decisions, like develop an obsession with having a son, which led him to order the death of his beloved wife, with the maesters cutting Emma open in order to save the baby, with little to no regard for Emma's well-being, as she passed away in agony. It seems to be a combination of Viserys' physical illness sped up by his own declining mental health. He realises he's surrounded by a bunch of yes-men who did not have his best interest at heart, like Otto Hightower for example, and finally takes action when he dismisses his hand of the king. In episode 5, we see him struggle at the wedding of his daughter Rhaenyra to Laenor Valar as the disease seems to have entered his bloodstream. He hemorrhages quite a lot of blood and he passes out, much to everyone's concern. In the preview of episode 6, Viserys is seen looking in such poor health. His hair has thinned to the point of he actually looks completely bald, which makes him look a lot older. His face looks even more gaunt than I previously mentioned and he even seems to be slouched over when he walks. It's my guess that episode 6 will be his final appearance before he meets his end. I also have this really, really crazy thing it's out there that some of the blades that were used to build the Iron Throne had poison placed on them that cemented to the blade over time and that could be why his infection spread so rapidly and didn't actually heal at all. But I know it seems a little more far-fetched to think something like that could happen with the blades being so old. Anyway guys, that is my take on what is actually happening with the health of King Viserys. My question for you is the following, do you have any additional ideas or information on what's happening? with the king let me know in the comment section below thanks again for watching and i'll see you all in the very next video everyone notifications of uploads are more important than ever so please if you haven't already turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live making videos is what i love to do it's my dream and my passion However, it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.